an interdisciplinary and international uh, master degree. Uh, it was a, <laughs> a long birth. The program was, uh, I think, the Ave Maria was the original had the original idea and convened people to, to apply for this and, and only on the third round of application this uh, program was, was granted. But it was started as um, a joint degree between the universities of Tosco, Parma and Tallinn uh, ten years ago. Um, the DIL program uh, rested on still rests on, I think, four, four pillars, um, or four components, um, which we thought at the time were components that were particularly useful and necessary for people who would work, work as librarians or in a librarian role in uh, a digital library environment. Uh, these four pillars were uh, we may say digital documents, uh, the description, organization, metadata, etc. for digital material that is included in the digital library. There, it was a man management uh, pillar, uh, a pillar called users and usage of digital libraries, and the fourth pillar was a more technical making developing a digital library. Uh, we have had, as Anna Maria said, 137 students altogether. Um, we hope we had the uh, Erasmus Mundus grant for the first five years. Uh, and the Erasmus Mundus uh, had as a requirement that uh, there will that we could not take students, take more than two students from one country, which meant that uh, this program was very international, and there were also quite at that time quite generous grants for people from outside of, of Europe. So we had a very international attendance. And I think, uh, in addition to the uh, pillars of learning, that learning that went on between the students. Uh, from so many nationalities was a very important part of this uh, in, uh, learning experience for the students. Um, we, we have not been extremely precise in our definition of what a digital library is when we developed the curriculum for them. Uh, but uh, basically we understood it as, um, as a library in the sense that uh, we thought of a digital library as a collection with some kind of collection policy, some kind of uh, anticipated user group or usage, um, etc. Um, and uh, we thought that the competences necessary to run this kind of service with this kind of material was something that needed an added component to the traditional library uh, degrees. And that was what we were attempting to that was what we were attempting to, to provide. Uh, in addition to these uh, four learning components, uh, we of course uh, had to give our students a basic foundation in research methods and also uh, half a year of the program was devoted to uh, a master thesis of the students of the process. I think the DIL program has served a good purpose in these years. Um, Anna Maria will give you some data from a survey of the students which will tell something more I haven't really actually 
see the results of this survey. Uh, so I just exactly to, to, to see what the response has been. But but uh, what we have been learning and what we have been understanding is that this program has fulfilled uh, a need during the years of existence. Um, in what way it can go on fulfilling uh, whatever need there might be is, I think, what we shall discuss today. Um, the digital library of 10 years ago is not the same as the digital library today. Uh, the term is still in use. I mean, last week I got an email uh, announcing the start of the uh, White House uh, Historic Digital Library, uh, which uh, is understood then as a collection uh, of historic pictures of the White House. And it's still called a digital library. Uh, but the definition of a digital library is even more, I think, difficult now than it was when, when this program started. And it's perhaps, <coughs> even though that, it's perhaps easier to, to, to speak of a digital, um, of, to speak of digital librarianship rather than to speak of a digital library. And then we can discuss what this digital librarianship involves, what kind of competences, what kind of knowledge, what kind of uh, skills uh, this digital librarianship involves. And we can also discuss whether digital librarianship is anything different nowadays from librarianship as such, because digitization has now reached the point where, where it is encountered in any kind of, of library work. Um, <coughs> I don't know how many of I should go on and say something about my point of view of the future, or should we give the other panelists? Hi everybody, uh, my name is Graham Walton and I've been involved with DILF for 10 years and what's really, what I'm really enjoying is I'm coming in this room and I'm seeing people who I've got to know over the past 10 years because I was trying to work it out and we had 13... The other way around. <laughs> Your pocket So I was trying to work it out, and I think we've had 13 DIL students who have been on internships in my university library over the past 10 years. And they have come from Poland, Hungary, Italy, Malaysia, Nigeria, and China. <laughs> um, and it's, it's been a real privilege hosting you in my library, because when I've talked to my colleagues I was coming out here, they all mention individuals saying, how are they doing? So I think it's a real credit to your professors that you've made such a good impression when you've been on internships. And I've always enjoyed every September, October, getting on the train, playing, coming across to Palmer, or Florence, or Pisa, depending on circumstances, and getting a chance to meet a lot of you. So it's great to be here. Um, what I thought I would look at is some of the skills that I think digital librarians need. And I don't want to talk on the technical skills, because to some extent, that's a different issue. What I want to talk about are the kind of personal skills that I think librarians, not only digital librarians, need. Um, and in, work, in the university at library I work, we look after the institutional repository. We also do the data research management for the university. But I also sit on a desk two hours a week where I help people when they're having problems with e-journals and when the web of science is down. So, I think that my experience is coming at digital libraries from lots of different directions. Um, so what I want to talk about first are the skills that I think people need when they start their professional career. I then want to look at 
the skills three or four or five years later. And then I want to finish off with something that I, I'm even more convinced has got to be important. So I'll finish off with that. Um, I think the, the first personal skill is being creative and innovative. Because I think if you look at our competitors, they're showing lots of great creative, creativity and innovation. And the challenge for us is we've got to use those same skills to make our product as creative as those are. And that's all about trying something new. And looking at other sectors, if you go to the bank, and they've got a really good idea on a digital service, get that idea and bring it into the digital library. So it's how we get ideas from other sectors and bring them back in. And I think it's all about having a culture where people have fun. Because people, if people have fun, then they're creative. If they don't have fun, then they and walk out the door. So I think creativity has to be go along with a sense of enjoyment. But I think there's a responsibility for the library to provide the culture to allow people to do that. If the culture doesn't support creativity, then it's really difficult to do that. And I think tied in with that creativity is a willingness to make mistakes. I think so many of us think we have to do something perfect. We are scared that there will be something wrong and we will be found out. But I think one thing that social media has shown us is that it's okay to make mistakes. Because if you make a mistake, the crucial thing is you learn from the mistake. If you don't learn from the mistake, then that is a problem. So I think we make mistakes, but we learn from them. And again, I think in libraries, we've got to allow people to make mistakes. Rather than sending them an email saying, come to see me at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, I want to you to explain why you did so and so. Explore with them why they did something and what was the learning. Another area that I'm really passionate about is important how collaboration and partnerships are a core element of the digital librarian. They've got to work with academic staff, they've got to learn with e-developers, they've got to work with students, they've got to work with marketeers. So I think digital librarians shouldn't wait to have collaboration, they should go to people and say, I want to work with you. So take the lead. <coughs> um, another key skill is the marketing ability. Because now uh, we have to market our services. 20 years ago, if people wanted a university library service, they had to go to the university library. Now, it's not so straightforward. So therefore, we have to be able to market what we are doing to the customer. And then, another thing that I, I'm very strong in belief of is we have to like change. We haven't got to avoid change. Because change will come our way. And if we don't actually embrace it, we will find it very stressful and very difficult. So we have to accept the change happens. The only thing that's not going to change is that, 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 that change will not stop. So how we actually embrace change. And then another skill I expect a digital librarian to have is the whole concept of evidence-based practice. I think what we have to do is we have to be able to evaluate, gather evidence, and then use that evidence to make a decision. It's no longer good enough just to do something because, well, it, it might work. That, that, that's okay to some extent. But we have to be able to evaluate it and then make a decision on that evaluation. So, evidence-based practice is, to me, really important. So that's what you need, I think, in the first year. So after you've been working as a digital librarian for three or four years, there's two skills I think need to be acquired. <coughs> And that, the first one is to have a really good strategic understanding of the external environment. You can't expect somebody, when they start as a digital librarian, to fully understand the outside world. But after three years, you should know the sociological factors that are happening, the technological factors, the economic and the political. And you have to be able to take in this external environment and feed it back into your service so it reflects what's happening in the outside world. And then the, the next skill that I think somebody needs at three to five years old is influencing. Because as digital librarians, you are advocates for quality information. So you have to be able to influence the policy makers, the funders, that digital libraries are worth funding. So you have to be able to advocate that and influence those with the power. So that's, at the very beginning, 
three to five years, and I want to finish off with something which, if anything, I'm even more... I've worked in university libraries now for about 40 years. That's a long time. <laughs> Believe me, that's a long time. But one thing I'm really, really passionate about is the importance of the user experience. And I think we've got to actually have the user experience at the very centre of what we do. Because if we don't have the user at the centre, then the chances are they will find alternatives. And I know the user experience as a concept was developed in IT, but I think librarians have really adopted the principles of UX. And now it's happening, we're, we're trying to capture the user experience in our physical buildings, we're also trying to catch the digital user experience. So we need to be able to actually have the user understand what they're doing, so we can actually make sure we give them what they want. And um, it's all about customer service, customer care. And it's interesting, I don't know in other countries, but in the UK, in some universities, the customer is not the word to use. People say, we do not have customers. We have students. We offer, not even users, we have students who we offer an academic experience. Customers is not the word to use. They are not buying a service from us. Well, I would actually disagree, because I think now that people can choose where to go to, and they pay a lot of money. So therefore, they have a right as an as a investor to get something back. So we've actually got to do six things, five things for the customer. We've got to have customer insight, so we have to know what they're doing. We have to have a culture which actually supports our staff in giving the customer focused service. We have to give the customer the information they need and when they want it. We have to deliver it by having challenging standards. So we monitor what we do and we meet those standards. And we have to be timely in our service. And if we can do those five things, then we can offer a good customer experience. But I don't think we have any choice. So to me, of all the skills that I think we need at the moment, it's this customer focus. So that's a reflection on the skills that I think the digital library needs. Yeah. Thank you, Anna Maria. May I ask first a question? Uh, we have uh, two, two rounds here on the, on the table. Yes, yes. Because, you know, I have packed two papers in one paper, like ever when you called me to Parma University, and uh, sorry, what do I have to do? Grant, 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 I have maybe a compliment to Ragnarok and Graham says people with so great emphasis that I would like to register immediately for a course to become a digital librarian. <laughs> because I know I have to learn so much. Uh, thank you, Anne for the invitation. I am uh, not a professor like the both here. I am a simple librarian. Since a couple of years I am doing my work, my duty, in the stony wine hill between woods of uh, the Bavarian State Library. The Bavarian State Library is one we have, we was called in Germany, one of the hidden champions of the decade, not only of the year, of the decade. We are very unknown. We are a big, one of the biggest research libraries uh, in Europe at least, with worldwide now big collections, digital collections, and we are noticeably, I would say, between the leading digital libraries in Europe at least. So, let me tell something from the praxis, what the professors have told me, and I have just to say now, I really enjoy it because I divide some experience with you, what we have to do in next years, or what we do today, we have also to do something today, not only tomorrow. And so, what we live is, uh, this is the world of today, we have a lot of slogans, a lot of buzzwords, know what we need a digital librarian, a data librarian, info broker, librarian, and and and. I think uh, it looks or it sounds a little bit like a brave new library world, uh, to quote the title of the well-known book by Aldous Huxley, 
which are we confronted by, which is frequently described, mostly by individuals and people with libraries in their everyday life, everyday life, seldom or not at all. In this context, digital librarian is the most modest term, but what does reality look like? The reality of the background where we are working is the phenomenon of the hybrid library state. I think that it's still going on. Implies, but this uh, term not implies only not only print and digital resources under one roof, but much more. I would uh, say the same like Graham, and we should not only point them so much on the on the technique only, but it's much more. We have the emancipation of the user from the library, from one library. He can choose, he can come or he becomes a customer if you want which has the effect of a paradigm shift in the library from former media or collection centered service to a user centered service. We have in particular, this is a new experience for librarians, a competition, a competitive situation, not only between the libraries, but with and in particular with the new upcoming, not more than new, but this uh, conference here is dedicated to Google Times, Still, Google, especially commercial information providers, they make the, the life to, uh, partly to help for the libraries and the librarians because people are started not only with Google, often they finish also with Google. As well as we, the boundaries between the so called memory institutions, such as libraries, archives, and museums, increasingly dissolve. So, the first lesson learned for us is when we see in the praxis what uh, digital librarians do. Libraries and librarians are not actors anymore. For a long time, say, dictated even the, the speed, the speedness, what should happen in the information world, but say are driven by the increasingly rapid development of information technology. Here, I think we cannot uh, make to be blind what is happening. <coughs> it is like that. Therefore, the fact of time is crucial. This also implies that on the one hand, the half-life period of topics and knowledge or skills is decreasing, while on the other hand, the necessity of a permanent update is increasing. Requirements or activities in the hybrid library, the main motto is the old talents in a new guise. Acquisition, what means that today? Information citing, evaluating, collecting. We have thousands of forms of new information materials. We have much more than technical challenges of multimedia content in the library. We have uh, the phenomenon that the text uh, oriented world, text oriented knowledge, is shifting to a more uh, uh, image dominated uh, culture. I think this is really a change of culture. The indexing, cataloging and so on, metadata world, <coughs> never we need so much metadata, never cataloging as a part of the metadata creation was so important. That is the daily experience in my library. That means formal descriptive metadata, technical administration, administrative content related structural metadata and so on. And don't forget, we have a new need in the public for visibility and accessibility and there I consider for example the information portals as a secondary way of indexing, of gift orientation. Provision and dissemination of information, the former what the user could see or ask in the library, ideal would be a one-stop shopping. That is still for me my objective number one. The contextualization of information <coughs> to give more orientation to the users just from the beginning of it, not only the information pure but much more. And what we call, or what we call generally, is a teaching library within the aim or the objective of a well informed, information liberated user. Whatever it would mean or can mean, it depends on the complete case, I think. And the wide and complex field of data curation or digital curation, or can also call it data stewardship and preservation. Please remember, in the digital world, all starts from the beginning on. Preservation starts with creation of data, and not at the end when you think, well, I put something in the dive item. It's too late. So, 
technicalism of the world, specialization versus generalization, and especially important when taking into account the speed of change, uh, and again, speed of change, of technological change, flexibility in the daily working, re or respectively training and knowledge <coughs> that support or even allow this flexibility in the first place. The new task field, data production, data acquisition, we do a lot in withdraw digitization, as we call it in Germany, the bringing the material from the old printed world, analog world, in the new digital world. The licensing versus open access. Never librarians, simple librarians needed so much knowledge in rights, in laws. When, when you think we, we started in my library, uh, 10 years, no, 15 years ago, we have had one lawyer in the library. Today we have five. Five lawyers. It's not why we want it to become a special library for advocates. <laughs> we want, of course, we have good advocates, we offer them a nice working place. But this is a consequence what happens in the world. The digital world, the digital information world is much more complicated than we have had in the former world. So, uh, data processing, data refinement, data administration, what I just mentioned, the metadata management and data curation, this is still the heart of our doing. There, I want to have good and well-educated and well-updated uh, librarians. Data provision, data use, we come to the user front with the first line of the user front. There we have the new phenomena, not so new, but still this is like a hype at the moment, digital humanities in Germany, nobody knows exactly what it is. Is this a special part of humanities? Or is this something special from the digital world coming to the humanities? Okay, it's an open question. Uh, big data. Big data not only in the pure science. We have big data when we have created my library now, thanks also, not only, but also to Google. We have digitized together 1 million uh, dot two. 1.2 million uh, volumes in the meanwhile and thousands and thousands of other uh, materials and uh, uh, there uh, of course uh, this is big data so we are confronted today with questions from researchers from the <coughs> so-called digital humanities they want to have own platforms for this for the usage of this data so we were really surprised that now we are also in the world of big data a virtual research environment. Here we have the phenomenon of the so-called embedded librarian. The uh, institution of virtual research environments, whatever it means, is one of the first priority objectives of the German Research Society, the uh, state body, the most important state body in Germany for promoting uh, research. And uh, we don't know exactly what it means. We know only that the librarian has to be there from the beginning on. Not coming up then and doing something and the classical thing, but it has to be embedded, integrated in a team. And again, data archiving, digital preservation, this is a wide and complex field, and I can go in details here. Should has learned digital library as an organism. The digital library, much more than the traditional library, has to be understood as an interlinked entirety. In this framework, crucial for the quality of the whole are the transitions, so to speak, <coughs> the interfaces of the individual work areas and the operations by the digital librarians, which act as an interface manager, more or less. The new skills in, in the field of management, as I have just mentioned, we have never had in library so much legal issues from copyright law to sales tax questions, staff questions, the question of finance, and at least in Germany, where all, all the libraries, the big libraries, belong to the civil uh, service world. Nowadays, we have to look for extra money. The organization, especially the field, where I would like to deepen that a little bit in the practice, the project management knowledge. <coughs> a good young library, when librarian is coming to my library, has to be just well prepared for project management. This is one of the most important things. Soft skills, as mentioned, uh, right? Uh, Graham, the he has to be or she has to be a communication talent with special team skills, sensibility, 
and IT expertise in a broader sense, including the ability to explain issues to the IT experts. This is very, very important. Deeper knowledge of data management question in a broader sense, especially in the subject of metadata. And this another <coughs> soft skill, sensitive for user needs or customer needs, and skillful in the dissemination of the range of services offered. Fourth, lesson learned, new importance of internal information and communication in your institution, in your corporation, in the library. The digital library to a much greater extent than the widely print-based analog library lives on the successful internal information and communication. We experience we means really we in the digital library are side by side, or better the cooperation of very different specialists, especially IT specialists and the librarians, just means a new generation of librarians. It is vital that especially that especially librarians learn to communicate their concerns and explain them to the respective experts. So this is what I would perhaps afterwards when you have more time uh, explain what you can do in my library exactly or in complete case. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm sorry I can't be there in person, but I really appreciate the opportunity to talk with you a little bit about digital librarianship and education, and really to say congratulations on Dill and being at the 10th year of this. I've been uh, very honored and proud to be even just a little small part of it over the years. I have still fond memories of coming to Florence and baking pizzas and wishing there were air conditioning, but that's a whole other story. So Anna Maria asked me to respond briefly uh, around the concept, or the questions of what should education for digital librarians be in the next three to five years. So as I think about that question, I think it really breaks down into two major responses. The first is what should they know? Um, what are the competencies? What are the skills? What are the ideas that they should understand? The second thing that I think we need to think a lot about particularly as we move into the future of preparing digital librarians, is how should they know it? Because I think how we educate and how we prepare ourselves and how we prepare the next generation of librarians for engaging in digital settings, we need to think about how it changes how we teach them and how that works. So let me start with the first question about what do we need to know? Well, the first thing is that preparing digital librarians means we're preparing librarians. So they need to clearly understand the, the core values of the profession. They need to have a real understanding of not just how to do something, but why they should do it. Ultimately, they need to understand about the profession, where it's come from, and those core values don't change a heck of a lot. In fact, I think over thousands of years, they change very, very incrementally. For me, it still centers on librarians understanding the core mission, which is to improve society through facilitating knowledge creation in their communities. Why are they doing this? Why do they digitize? Why do they organize? Why do they develop online systems? Why do they go to the effort of doing all of this? Because they want to make their communities smarter. We, we believe as librarians that people who are smarter have better access, richer resources, deeper insights, deeper understandings of the world around them make better decisions. So the first thing that every librarian needs to understand is why we're doing this is to make our community smarter. And the way we do that is by facilitating knowledge creation. Ultimately, librarians are not about storehouses and warehouses and just-in-case information. They're birthplaces of ideas. Why we do this is that we create, either online or in physical presence, or normally a combination of them, a place for people to come and learn and understand better the world around them so they can make better decisions to govern themselves, to live more fulfilling lives, etc. And that means they need to understand the core values of librarianship, of openness. We believe that as we do things, we do it with transparency, we do it with understanding, we show the process, we show multiple ideas and being very open to the diversity of ideas that we provide. 
We do it around learning. We believe that everyone can learn. We believe that that learning happens in many different ways, from reading, from exploring, from doing, from 3D printing to digitizing to all of these things. And all of those are part of librarianship, not just a certain given tool or set of mechanisms like books or manuscripts or materials. All of it's about learning. We believe in service. We believe that the ultimate success that we provide is in those that we serve. In other words, you can't look at what I do and say you were good at it. You have to look at those that I serve and are they successful to know if I'm good at it. And lastly, we believe in intellectual honesty. That is, that we believe in rationality, that we provide insight and documentation. We worry about the reliability of information and the validity of information. So, given that, then we can break down, but what makes it unique about librarianship? Well, I base it around something called the Salzburg Curriculum, and I think it still stands. The first thing that digital librarians need to understand is they need to understand the concept of transformative social engagement. That the work they do, the resources they build, the science that they perform, the services they build, are all around making communities better. They are having an impact in the community, not simply there just in case. That means that they have to understand the values of the community. They have to understand the politics and power of a community. They have to understand the impact of what they're doing. We need to talk around curation then. It's not simply a matter of us storing it all and organizing it, but the idea of focusing on the community and building an array of tools to meet their needs. They must clearly understand technology from digitization to building online resources to how we design those interfaces and systems. They need to understand things like cataloging protocols and linked data and semantic data sets. We need to understand that the focus around that technology is on connecting things together. XML, all those wonderful things. We need to understand as a digital librarian the idea of how do we manage this participation. How do we build a system and workflow and organize it and document it and show accountability for it. We need to understand asset management. That we're dealing with materials in many cases. Some historical, some brand new, some born digital, some digitized. How do we connect them together through information organization, the idea of some um, ontologies, and the idea of how do we connect that thinking together to people's needs? Cultural skills. How do we understand the use of language and how language impacts how people search and find and how do we understand norms of communities so that we can match those norms? and oftentimes challenge those norms as we push them ahead. Thinking about privacy within the community context, thinking about access within a community context. And ultimately, we need to understand the concept of knowledge itself. That as librarians, we need to have a critical understanding, I mean critical from the sort of critical theory perspective, about knowledge and learning, semantics, the idea of looking at epistemologies and understanding the theory behind it and how it applies. Librarians are not simply clerks that carry out digitization efforts. They are scholars and thinkers that meet the needs of their communities by first identifying those needs and then negotiating with the community how we can push those needs forward or challenge those needs. So that talks about what they need to know. And I don't think that that radically has changed in the past 10 years. Um, maybe a bit in the past 20 years, certainly our understanding of the power of the individual and the notion that librarians are not simply unbiased mm, scholars that simply array things, but that we have a vision, a value, and that we put a perspective in it. That's probably changed. But the core values that we provide of knowledge and openness haven't changed for thousands of years. What has changed, I think, and Dill is a great example of it, is how we teach that. How will the education of digital librarians change in the next three to five years? I think we see this as a continuum and an accelerating continuum. We understand that education of librarians must be, first and foremost, experiential. That is, it's one thing to talk about theory, and we need to do that. But every discussion of theory, every seminar, must be linked to a practica. We must take these ideas in the abstract and put them into action.
we have the ability as part of the education process that they can be in building collections, they can be in interacting with communities, and they can begin understanding that complex relationship that's developed online and with different people of different thinking. And that needs to happen from day one, not waiting until after they graduate and hoping for the best. That experiential learning must also be participatory. And that doesn't simply mean that people are doing things. It means that as instructors, we have to understand we are just as much learning from the students as the students are from us. That we must understand that good education, good participatory education is no longer about I have a great understanding of the world that I will transfer to you, the student, but that the student and the teacher are working together to constantly re-understand, reinvent, reimagine what libraries are. That's a participatory context. And not only is it about a student and a teacher, it's about a community and a student and a teacher constantly interacting, constantly relearning, constantly re-examining, constantly rethinking. It means that, frankly, as the old-time gray-bearded professor, my job is to learn as much as it is to pass along what I already know. And lastly, we must talk about this being continuous. That learning is not something that's done in the first two years, you get a degree and then you go out and simply do it for the rest of your life. But just as the teacher and student and community are learning together, they're always doing it. What we know and what we learn in DIL 1 and DIL 5 and DIL 10 are different and they'll be different from 11 and 12 and after you're done with the DIL program you'll continue to learn and be part of examining and re-examining the role of librarianship in society. I very much see this in line with what I know of the DIL program and I very much see it as a very encouraging and exciting time for our profession. So congratulations once again. Thank you for making part of it. And I really look forward to seeing where we're going in the future. Okay. Uh, two very uh, different and very interesting perspectives. Uh, one on the nature of the, lab, the, the, the digital library and one on the uh, duties of the digital library, to put it like that. Uh, an interesting thing that, that should be discussed at this stage, I guess, is uh, are there a difference between a librarian and a digital librarian these days? Is there scope for a specific education in digital librarianship on top of whatever education we give to librarians in general? Because every librarian encounters these challenges that you were mentioning. Um, and of course, uh, there are developments that calls for special knowledge or special skills, uh, obviously. For instance, the scope of digital data, digitized data that libraries are expected to handle is widening extremely. The big buzzword these days in academic circles is research data. The Norwegian Research Foundation does not anymore give grants to researchers if they do not have a plan for the preservation and dissemination of their research data. But the Norwegian Research Foundation do not give any directions as to how these data should be described, disseminated and, uh, and, and handled. Uh, this is just one example of new sets of data that needs new kinds of description which calls for specific skills in being able to uh, interpret data, describe data, store data and disseminate data that are new, that have new purposes and that need integration with existing. Uh, there are other challenges. Uh, the separation between the technician and the librarian is more and more difficult to, to, um, to make. Where does that uh, technical knowledge start and the sort of uh, whatever we would call the whole knowledge uh, stuff? Uh, because uh, to be able to curate to disseminate all these new kinds of data. 
uh, we need to understand the systems that are used to curate them, to set, disseminate them, to store them. And uh, it is increasingly difficult to draw the line between the computer specialist and the librarian. And one of the challenges is to develop that librarian to a level of technical skill that means that he or she at least can communicate well with the system of uh, There are all the legal aspects that you were mentioning, which opens a whole new world of, of challenges as these new kinds of data, sets of data, are uh, taken into account. Uh, the big data problem that you want to challenge or possibility say, uh, <coughs> that you mentioned are also uh, a big uh, specialized kind of special skill or knowledge uh, or at least a field of study that uh, should be a challenge for digital for librarians which would like to specialize in the in a digital direction. Um, the Norwegian National Library, as, as your library, has now completed more or less the digitization of everything that has been printed in the Norwegian language. Uh, there is almost nothing now that is not in digital form. And that, as you say, opens a whole new world of possibility for researchers. They now expect to be able to find traces of, let's say, Ibsen's work in other authors' work. They expect to be able to dig down into this mass of data. And that calls for different kinds of metadata, different kinds of approaches than the ones we have traditionally been using to describe these kinds of data. So, uh, and of course, there is the user aspect. Who are, how, how do we reach users? We don't see them. How do we reach users when they are, uh, they are not controlled by us anymore? Uh, but their needs are as, as real as, as they were when they came to our desk and told us what they needed. Uh, so all these challenges are there. How to convert them into a curriculum that can, can be studied uh, in a program of two years or one and a half year or whatever format we would like to, to use is another question that I won't even attempt to do now. Yeah, should I handle the second part of my paper to explain what we do, what we expect, or do we need it? You know, which, and my, my problem is always here. We are speaking a lot about digital library, but nobody knows really what, what, what happens behind the scenery. Who of you is really working in a digital environment? Please. Let me see. Uh, digital environment means for me also the famous hybrid world where you are changing even daily from uh, running your book processing to uh, running uh, your metadata uh, problem. You need new schemes of metadata because you have a very special material in front of you where you cannot adopt what you have uh, learned and so on. This is what I would say uh, at the the core of the challenge is, is uh, that you cannot all, you cannot all, train, you cannot all teach uh, in your courses. If you have, a, if you would teach ten years, uh, it is impossible. What you have to give, in my opinion, is, and so I finish my thought. So that what you have told to us, Graham, you have to be curious for new things for your whole professional life. Be curious in what you are thinking and be flexible in what you're doing. So, uh, we have just years, years ago, before existing, before the digital library was um, uh, a term, there was just another term very famous, job rotation, learning on the job, and so on. This is not out of fashion. This is still actual, an actual that ever. And though what we want, I me mean, as a manager of a, of a library and of a, of a digital department in my library is to have 
uh, young, fresh librarians, even they have done 10 years of service with them. And there could be the echo on what you are teaching to the young people that the experienced digital librarians came back in the courses and you have to organize the workshops and the young students can ask their predecessors what, what is your experience and why, what do you think today about what you have learned five years or two years would be better ago and where should I put my uh, attention in particular. And you will see, I'm sure, at least as a movement, it's really like that that we have to remember our old talents, really to structure information, so I can pick it up, to give a first evaluation, then you structure it, you elaborate it, that means you meditate on it, you administrate that, and at the end you disseminate it with the new tools. But the core of activity is not really changed. What it is, it becomes, the, the silhouette becomes sharper. What Graham has told is absolutely true, and run the tool is you have to be more sensitive for customers' uh, necessities. Even you have to, to guide him in a, little, in, in a way. Because we have the situation where our users or customers of today are able currently able to use the new tools, but they have enormous lacks in comparison to former times to find the right words, the right terms to make your research. We have not more coming people from schools where they learn the richness or richdom of their language. They have a very reduced language and in a, in a computer world where the association, your capacity to associate terms is uh, more important than ever, this is of course a deadly uh, danger, you know? Then you have really to be guides, navigators, but you have to do it in a very sensitive way. You cannot come there and say, oh, go away, I do it for you. That would be the wrong, uh, the wrong strategy. Okay? So finish here. Uh, because I become a missioner, and a missioner and we will die in the field. I don't want to.
a new kind of uh, librarian role that I think is especially suited to digital librarians, given our training in Bill. Um, this role is called the, mostly called the Digital Scholarship Librarian. And um, in trying to envision a new curriculum for the future, I think for this role, the most important underlying um, issue is collaboration. And I think collaboration has been mentioned um, in different aspects by the, um, the panel before me, but I'll show you what I mean uh, here. Okay. So, basically, um, there have been two communities of practice existing alongside each other for many years. Um, the digital humanities community on one side and the digital library uh, community on the other. This new role of a digital, digital scholarship librarian um, proposes a partnership between these two communities. And um, this is, I think, happening in other uh, branches of librarianship also. Um, I just saw an article that was published a week ago um, by Meredith Schwartz, who uh, listed collaboration and partnership as the second most important skill for libraries, librarians of the future. Okay, so just a small bit of context about this new position of a digital scholarship librarian. Um, up to now, studies that have looked at these two areas of practice have focused on the differences between them and trying, trying to define what each one meant and how they were separate. Um, in general, there's been some hesitancy, at least, that I've seen in my research about the idea of getting involved with one another's areas. Um, oh, the, the biggest hesitancy that I've seen from the point of view of librarians are cost concerns, while digital humanities are often a bit more wary of, um, of what will happen to their data that they have, um, that they have um, worked so hard to, uh, to, to put together in their projects. However, um, at least over the last three years, a new attitude has been emerging with respect to these two communities. And on both sides, they're seeking collaboration. The greatest evidence that I've seen of this is the new role, which I think has existed in the past, but there's a greater and greater need uh, for it of the digital scholarly librarian. And when, 
when I looked at the, de the definitions that have been bandied about, uh, about these two uh, groups, the role of, they're both centered around um, digital objects, uh, data, and um, the difference between them has seemed to be that the digital librarian in includes an aspect of service, of providing a service to a user. Whereas the digital humanist is the researcher or the user. <coughs> um, however, more recently, the skills in each body of practice have, have been evolving. And um, the studies are um, framed along this older model are no longer reaching the needs of the two different communities. Um, furthermore, um, a new model is emerging. Uh, Bethany Nowitzki was kind of a whistleblower, and she wrote this uh, kind of controversial uh, article called Dress of Scotia at the Library. And in it, she, she paused to reflect on the fact that librarians very often are also researchers. So there's this, like, this correlation between the researcher and the librarian. And um, she posited a new model of relationship between these two groups, not as the server and the user, but as two collaborators. And this sparked a whole flurry of scholarly studies and articles and trying to understand what this collaborative model would mean for librarians, for digital humanists, for faculty. And um, I, can, I would love to go into the different uh, research that is available <coughs> along these lines, but I'll just uh, confine myself to Keener in 2015, said that libraries are more up to date on digital humanity trends than the faculty themselves. So what, does, what is this new digital scholarship librarian facing when he, goes in, he or she goes into the world of, um, of digital humanity centers within academic libraries? There's uh, just a very recent uh, study um, about this question um, by the Yale Kincaid uh, Center for Research. They surveyed um, faculty and librarians within um, university libraries across America. And what they found that was that both groups want digital humanity centers to, to exist within the library. Um, they both mentioned as the most important skill sets of this role, roles that digital librarians already have, and by that I mean skills that we have learned in the DIL program, including things like curation of an institutional repository, data curators or stewards, um, data, metadata enhancement, preservation, planning, advocacy. Um, a significant percentage of each group want the librarians to be equal partners in the digital humanities questions. Um, it should be noted that um, a lot more librarians feel that they should be uh, equal partners than the faculty. And it's on the other side, the, um, the, the librarians are seeing that they're having a difficulty with engaging, in, engaging the faculty. But it does seem that in the success cases, um, the digital librarians have actually taken hold and started bringing the research questions themselves and beginning the projects and then the, the faculty have come to them and um, there's just been... <laughs> um, so what does this mean for digital librarians? Very quickly, digital librarians are, are already very well trained in this area. They're missing some skills but not so many. This is a new era in which digital research and digital libraries are bridging the gap. They're coming more and more together. Um, becoming a collaborative librarian is on our horizons. We will always ask the question, what does the user need? But more and more, what the user needs is our collaboration. And this is seen in other environments. So just a few 
skills, basically most of the skills that uh, a digital librarian will need in order to engage in the research questions of digital humanities are technical. I think the exception is that they need to, they need to understand what the key trends are in digital humanities in order to, to uh, lead the questions. Uh, to update the curriculum, um, of course, um, Dill could consider including some digital humanities <coughs> training within their um, within their program. That's their own uh, choice. Mm -hmm. There is a new master's program. There are training camps, virtual uh, training through via Daria EU by MOOCs. There's a lot of availability in Zotero groups. And finally, I'll just point to the Age <coughs> Commons, which um, offers offer immediate. Uh, opportunities to collaborate with uh, with libraries. I will just leave you with the final quotation. Libraries will be more successful at generating engagement with digital humanities if they focus on helping the librarians lead their own digital humanities initiatives and projects. Regarding the synchronous service, it's the real-time 
communication between the staff and the teachers, and it is implemented through CHAS, which is the most known format, and maybe it can be replaced the reference services. Then it's based on messages, which is similar to the chat, but it requires a specific software. Video conferencing is a word of the aids, something like the Skype and the learning report. So, the advantages of digital reference services are the availability for users at any time and any place. It's an expanding way of interactive learning with users. The comprehensive access from the staff and minimization of the ambiguity through the region of the class. On the other hand, the advantages of the digital reference services are the absence of invention interaction, which is in advanced environments may be complicated uh, and detailed process. In a synchronous means, the immediate replies are not always certain. And of course, the cost that it requires for the software and the hardware. So, could be this service effective in a digital library? Ms. Anna Maria had discussed a lot the lack of personalized services in digital libraries. And we figured out that uh, indeed, uh, digital, libraries, digital libraries mainly defined by the spectrum of technological characteristics and not so much from the services. Sloan, early from 1998, he had examined various uh, definitions. And he pointed down to this, the lack of human factor in the digital environment. And recently, Choi said that digital libraries has to be an information service center that means merely an information warehouse. And this makes me start thinking how can be effective for the users and the librarians the existence of this service. The users in the digital environment, they are they're searching alone and they have to confront with the abundance of information resources. And the librarian seems to be absent for supporting them. So the established research question was which are the current relations between users and librarians for retrieving information? Which communication way between digital reference services and in person communication users could consider more accurate? And which are the users' expectations from librarians while they will use digital reference services? In order to achieve these goals, I was uh, implementing qualitative methodology and I used uh, the case studies and the research methods. And as Alison Pickard says, the, the case study is the vehicle for uh, attaining the investigation. So uh, I was uh, investigating the Sudan Institutional Repository of Harvard University. My sample was purposing a snowball and was a uh, professor's making, since they can contribute with the uh, quality elements. I used the interview and uh, with cost of analysis technique. So the first finding uh, shown the preference of interviewees to contact with the staff. And the dominant was the impression communication. Then it was the calling and then the sending mails. And here we are. And having understood the relations with the library, I explained to them what digital reference services are, the types and the formats, and I stimulate them to consider how this could be accurate for a genuine information. About the digital reference services, they said that they is uh, good for them since it supports distant users. They can receive direct and uh, valid information in a faster way and it could be effective. I want to, say, uh, to refer a distinctive quotation for an interview. He said that in some cases you may receive more accurate information than with in person communication. It is not easy to be served when the library is crowded. When you are at your office and your inquiry comes up, it is easier to write it down and articulate it. It seems that indeed it would be convenient for them. Regarding the in-person communication, they said that it is not very great since it minimizes the understanding. You can receive 
institutes and don't play with clients. And also you can give and receive detailed explanation. An interesting point, it was uh, about that both ways can provide equal accurate information since a uh, reply from the authorized staff of the library, which shows that even the, the participants that they prepare the impression of communication, they're willing to use this kind of services. It is in the past. And throughout the interview, the respondents pointed out the role of the library in order to be successful in the implementation of links and reference services. They emphasize on the promotion of the techniques, saying that many students ignore the services of the library, saying to Google. As the library services exist, they have to be promoted. Many of us pass through the library, thinking that the staff will suggest only three to four books, and that's all. I didn't know that the library had these provisions. And this is the point that we are discussing today. And also, kind of way yesterday, at your section, it's just the same. That we have to go out from the walls of the library and to business research in order to know what we can do. And an interesting mention was from Butler and Bert, saying that librarians are no longer gatekeepers of information. As information is easily accessible online, their role has modified it from providing plain answers to stimulating the critical thought and guiding the research. So, regarding the expectations that the users have from the staff, as Megan said before, they said that uh, they can collaborate with the professors in order to distribute digital reference services to users. The characteristics of librarians should be willingness, skillfulness, supportiveness, and familiarity with new technologies. And uh, regarding the digital reference services, they pointed out that uh, a dedicated staff would be preferable in order to manage better the request. And we needed a detailed job description with a precise use of the staff. To sum up, the human factor is seen that it's omitted from the digital libraries when they start to be designed. The librarians, through this service, which is personalized, can provide a personalized support to the users, can continue to generate users, and they can be able to stimulate their thoughts. And this can be the human intermediation can be the competitive advantage of digital libraries towards the other providers. And I will end up with another quotation, which is from Sloan, 1998, saying that people may begin to believe that as physical barriers to access to information are reduced through technological means, the services of the librarian are no longer necessary. So maybe we have to consider this point. <laughs> Thank you for your attention.
of the building and put it on a reference space so that we could then you know, uh, make us understand the context of information. But you are the dome or you are member of a team? I am a member of a team. Well, that's quite good. Yeah. The team is consisting only of librarians? Absolutely not. I'm the only one. And you are the only one, yes. librarian. Yeah. So you are in a pole position. <laughs> you are in a pole position. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Nicola is D5, but I think many others already, the student uh, can say something. You are in production. Oh. Oh. Are you are working in Oceana and uh, you are in Jenia. What are you doing in Oceana? Uh, yes. You are collaborating with the data. Yes, well, I'm working for the European Library which is uh, a library aggregator for European. Uh, but we are not actually building, uh, it's, it's not uh, related to this, uh, actually. It's, it's a different uh, uh, a part of the work. But uh, I, I'm working with, with data coming from a national library and research libraries. And then uh, um, I'm mapping that, that data to EDM and then deliver it to your app. This is a very important field also for libraries in my age of life. Yes, I know. Mapping, the I conceptual am... mapping, the technical yes. mapping, and coding, <laughs> what you mentioned here. Send my regards to Martin Mauka. Ah, okay. Very good. This is one of my guys, my, yes. my best guys. So, uh, uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm working with, with the, uh, the actual raw data. But before this, I was working in the uh, National Library of, uh, in Romania, in the digital library. So I, I got to see every step of the, the way from the you know the, the, ma the manuscript in the in the uh, special collection department how it was digitized and scanned and cataloged and so on so i was kind of coordinating that coming from the uh, digital library department but yeah at this point i got to work in a uh, more specialized uh, field so yeah with this uh, <laughs> topic uh, yeah, i don't think i have uh, but yeah i agree fully with you. For, uh, for me, uh, me, 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 you point, point and, uh, uh, this, this, this kind of, of uh, digital project or or, 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 or to, to, to search it as as fast as rather important while while you are not 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 starting to work for it. For example, we can learn in the environment. You, you can't imagine how complex it, 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 it is. Uh, uh, even a rather simple work looks like to, uh, to offer help uh, for like, 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 like librarians and then users to. Uh, Use integrated integrate library system services. There is a need at least two people. The first one who is building up the the, uh, the system and build up the main functions, and then the second one with a library knowledge background. Uh, uh, that the the first one doesn't need a a, a specific L I S T D C D. He can be more like a, te a te te technical person, but the, the other one who is the the, con the content manager has to get a deep insight to to several aspects of of of, of of library information science to take an open look to the the system in a broad way and has to think also through the eye of the 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 librarians and 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 and, and users how to segment the the, the material how it can be really useful to 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 them and and then then at least we don't have capacity of it, but a third or fourth people really would 
need who, who are like a tech, tech, technician making ma many kind, kind of works that, that, that are work, routine works and, and, and doesn't need, need any kind of, of higher education degree, just, just you have to take uh, tons of tasks. Yeah, yeah, so, so it's 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 work, uh, work working like that, and and, and, uh, and it's rather and rather important. Yeah, the aspect of the integration that you should really subdivide, you should do on the interfaces in the, in the collaborative world. The, the techniques uh, often have their own idea what uh, the librarian needs and also what the end user needs, but it doesn't come up to the reality normally. You know, there's a special thinking. So the librarian has to communicate to both sides. And uh, in a, I would say, in a very early moment of a project as constructed an app, you need from the beginning on a librarian who is able to understand the technical questions, and also in particular to understand what is the, uh, the, uh, the vision, what at the end should be the product. And so, if you want, Anna Maria, uh, the digital librarian should be also a perfect product manager, mm -hmm. not only <laughs> a technologist.
say I'm um, the example, <laughs> the concrete example of what <coughs> is a need uh, in the community for researchers um, to, to uh, contribute to the process of requirement felicitation <laughs> to, to envision the, the, the development of services. So I'm very happy to, uh, to have found this and uh, to share with you the new process very recently. Uh, yeah, it was information behavior uh, of uh, uh, film scholars, so scholars working with all the different You already heard about me. I am the third generation. Uh, recently I completed my studies. And now I'm working in a non-profit organization, the WEB. It's a data manager. It's a data manager. doing at the same time PhD in engineer, serving engineer in the National Technical University of Athens. And well, I, my main subject is about uh, semantics, information integration, and the most related topic that already Ragnar uh, was introducing before, uh, where is the line? Uh, you know, how we can analyze information. Okay, thank you. Okay, I am Maggie, I'm Bill Five. Uh, I work for Yokoyama, uh, I deal with content sourcing and uh, virtual exhibitions basically. So uh, actually I'm not um, working in a hybrid environment, it's strictly digital and we don't have a physical, um, well we have a physical building but we don't have a, um, books or yeah. Like, um, <laughs> Um, I'm also Bill 5, we are here Bill 5 quarter. Now I'm working in Austrian Academy of Science, Austrian Center for Digital Humanities, and my position is data analyst for semantic web technologies. So I actually work from the start, like part of my work is web development, so we develop information systems, and uh, second part of my work is um, to map all the data which we put in our information systems to ontologies, to metadata, to make it linked open data, to relate to all possible linked open data data sets and stuff like this. So, yeah, I really enjoy it. My name is Mark and I'm from Hungary and uh, I was all also, I am a member of the island with all of these nice people to talk together. I uh, was working as a digital librarian in the Hung Hung Hungarian National Library and I was participating in several digital library projects, but now I'm uh, wor working for a Pri pri private company called Mongoose that develops li library integrated systems and e, e, e con 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 content so solutions. Uh, currently, I'm wor working mainly with e learning the development ish issues uh, in, in the sense of the company pro products. We are just developing up uh, uh, this, this division of the company and uh, I'm uh, also ta taking PhD with a really fair um, topic that uh, uh, Xenia and Nicola described uh, about the uh, semantic review digital doc, document standards that, that are uh, relevant uh, also, also for, for library museums and archives and, mm -hmm. and I, I would like to describe how, how they can work to talk together in a same environment, what are, are the, the 
major same uh, standards and, and the ch challenges and, and, and I, I would like to dis describe some, some uh, main ch challenges and uh, some big development ways for the future. And I'm on the team for information literacy instruction, so we develop services and how we can support the students and the staff in doing the research. And of course, the focus is a lot on the digital services we have. And yeah, we have courses and developing learning materials and screencasts and some videos and um, yeah, other materials and services to support the students and the staff. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Erika, I'm from Lithuania and I actually don't work in a library or somewhere even close. Mm -hmm. I'm working in a digital advertising business and uh, I started as a documentation specialist writing user manuals. But now I switched a little bit and I'm a knowledge management specialist, but also I focus a lot on the internal communication in our company. Thank you. So, my name is Sonia Teodorito, I'm from Greece. I work now since January for NATO Military Library in Belgium. And I work for, as well for the historical office and I help them to integrate um, their bibliographic list into our database. As well, I try to educate people how to use their digital sources we have. And uh, as well, it's the fifth country I'm living in. <laughs> so <laughs> you can imagine how international <laughs> we are. <laughs> That's all. Thank you. And then you are going to be uh, Lisa next to me. So if you probably guessed, I work at the National Humanities Center. Mm -hmm. And I, my main role is to conduct um, digital research on uh, linguistic resources in Latin. And so I'm actually doing digital humanities research, but I'm also um, in, not in charge, but I'm on the team for metadata curation for the Virtual Language uh, Observatory of Clara and Eric. So I've done a lot of kind of crosswalk metadating and this kind of thing. So, and communicating. So, hello, my name is uh, Evangelia. Uh, originally from uh, Greece, now I'm relocated in the Netherlands. <laughs> I have uh, concluded successfully, I hope, <laughs> uh, my um, uh, internship in uh, Europeana, and I was offered a temporary uh, job there. So, I'm delayed, and I'm still <laughs> officially a student, uh, and now searching for a new job. So. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, yeah, I think I already mentioned, but yes, I'm uh, Adina, I'm the fourth, uh, yes, and I work for the European Library in The Hague, which is the um, uh, library aggregator for Europeana. So, um, my, my role, uh, yes, consists of communicating with uh, um, member libraries and asking them to give me their data and me working on uh, manipulating their data and uh, putting it in the app and delivering to your band. And this is, uh, it, this requires uh, soft skills and technical skills and uh, also everything that you mentioned. So because in, the, um, in our team, um, we are two operation officers and there are two uh, technical uh, people. And I need to also be able to translate my issues to the technical people in order to solve uh, what uh, yeah the, the issue that I'm encountering. So uh, yes, it's it's very complex and challenging, and sometimes it's chaotic. <laughs> but uh, yes, I'm still there. Thank you. 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 And I work for Casarini Libri, that is an Italian vendor. So I have mostly a very vendor perspective. And I used to be a semantic cataloger there for six years and a half, more or less. And I recently moved to a new department, that is the sales department. So that's completely different. I have 
let's say, more of a sales approach to the library world. And so, well, I'm studying here because I have to get more uh, knowledge about digital, and we do have also a digital platform at, Cas at Casalini, and I'm hoping to be able to use my, my competencies learned here in my current work. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, I'm Cynthia. I should say I'm an um, evolutionized librarian <laughs> because from, um, from academic school library to a special library where I set up a learning resource center. We don't call it a library and a neighborhood library uh, with the refugees. And then after that, I work in a corporate library. And this time that library is on a technical side. So after that, um, I work on board a ship, which is on a maritime library because uh, meeting the safety management standard. So it's more of uh, documentation. And then I stopped being a librarian, but still applying the skills. And then I moved to another company who is, uh, that is located in Miami and I work with them online. And that's how I become interested again to, to be a student of DEAL, to pursue, I think there's something missing with my career. So now I'm in DILL10. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm Carla, I'm from Italy, and I, I was in D7, but I'm still uh, uh, trying to finish the thesis. So I'm late, and I work in a small library in the center of Italy, an academic library, and with no digital task. And uh, maybe I will go to work also in the research area for uh, European project. We are working for a project about virtual museum, and um, I'm interested uh, in users. So I did a wonderful internship in Loughborough and uh, Graham gave me user experience topic and uh, I really love this topic. That's why, Madame Conway, I follow up your studies too a lot and I really enjoyed yesterday to meet you. And so I think, uh, and I also have to thank uh, Anna Maria because I would, uh, every uh, semester was good, but I realized that uh, the one with users was mine, and so I'm um, interested in users. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Carmen. I'm from Venezuela. I am uh, currently in the second semester of Bill 9. Uh, I'm a campus student in Halle, and I'm currently not working because uh, um, I'm a full time student, but I am also doing uh, my thesis. So I ask you to the three coordinators to form the group. Uh, you can uh, probably also move the chair. Uh, what do you What do you reckon? What do you want? What do you want?
perché this is not for being a student alone, or the other can uh, contribute. And uh, so I suggest that uh, in France, uh, go together the in a student uh, in the prison. And so probably the chair had to stand up and uh, find uh, members of the group. should know what kind of technical solutions are um, out there, what you can use for your concrete uh, projects in digital library field. Then probably uh, the expert, the digital librarian should know what kind of technical tools he can use for also again some task he has to accomplish. Then, of course, then we are talking about digital libraries, we are talking about uh, digital data. So, uh, digital librarian should understand what kind of data he has in the beginning, what he must do with this data, how he must process this data, and how this data should look in the end, how this data should be accessible. So, I think it's just like the clear understanding of the whole process um, of data manipulation from the start to the end. And also we mentioned that um, just the knowledge of the different kind of tools, uh, what are available, uh, and I'm talking about really tools like Excel, because it's a very powerful tool for working with messy data, or like open refine tool, and uh, those tools are not demanding programming knowledge, but they are very powerful if you have messy data set. So, uh, these kind of things, the person, the digital librarian has to know. And I also want to point that maybe uh, now then we have Google, I, I wouldn't say like libraries are competing with Google, but um, there is a possibility with uh, semantic web technologies to do something which is very cool and maybe if you align your data to some anthologies and your search engine in your library will really perform these digital librarian questions like where was this person living in this period of time? This is all possible with semantic web technology so I would say that maybe more accent and more focus in studies in these technologies because it's very um, innovative for last years and Facebook and Google invest a lot of money in these research fields but I know that academic libraries or any libraries they don't have that much money so <laughs> it's probably on enthusiasm of digital librarians to get deep into this field. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Is that okay now? <laughs> okay. Uh, we were the research method uh, team and uh, first of all uh, uh, we all uh, know that uh, research is a, a very important aspect of uh, being a digital librarian and uh, if I want to, to remember my origin as a Greek, <laughs> uh, we had an ancient Greek uh, um, saying that uh, uh, always be in doubt. So if you always doubt, then you can uh, come up with the truth. And uh, um, having uh, moderating this uh, conversation, we uh, have concluded that uh, a good research uh, has two pillars. Uh, first of all, uh, it acquires to expert your skills, your technical skills, your uh, uh, be master in tools, research tools, but also it is a, uh, an aspect of mentality, have a, a mentality for research. So, uh, and research is uh, not uh, um, uh, an ocean that can be it can be a little bit frightening uh, 
but research also is to be able to evaluate and to provide uh, evidence of what uh, you are doing. So it is something very, very important and uh, we have to uh, develop further these qualities of uh, research. And from the other hand, it is a matter of mentality. Uh, to be able, uh, we as uh, digital librarians, to achieve results, uh, to communicate effectively uh, with uh, uh, people and uh, uh, communicate uh, also our uh, research results. And of course to practice the information literacy because uh, that is um, uh, what people expect from us. To, to give them knowledge and evidence of what is going on and to navigate them uh, through. So that is something also very important. And uh, well, <laughs> I think that was the, the conclusion of our uh, uh, thing. Yes. Presentation. Thank you. Thank you. About uh, uh, you. And so, uh, Erika uh, is the first. Erika Grainte from Lithuania. And uh, she is from DIL 5. You can come here, Erika. Ah, okay, okay, sorry. Um, and so, um, she said she will speak how DIL combo offer helped to succeed in my career. Yeah, maybe it's better to show it online. Okay. Uh, Erika, you need the microphone. Yeah. And, uh, because now it's better. Maybe it's better that you don't give the shelter to the... What should I do? To stand here. <laughs> okay. So maybe I'll start shortly. Uh, so, as I said, I'm not working in digital library or in any kind of library, basically. I work in digital advertising industry. My company is called Adform. It's pretty kind of spread in Europe and we have a platform which is serving digital ads and then collecting some stats. And I was working as a documentation specialist. I wrote manuals, user manuals, so really I gained a lot of technological knowledge during that period of time and now I'm working as a knowledge management specialist. And so I've prepared this poster, which includes a bit of math, which I hate, basically, and uh, a bit of humor, and I hope it loads really soon, and I can tell you more. Sorry? I hope it will work. It's technology. We can pass You want to? We can pass it. In the <laughs> okay, in the meantime, then I can start, right? Just to save some time. So I called it combo offer basically because 
In my poster, I don't say much about technological things I've learned. It's more about soft skills, which helped me in my life and my career. So I called it Combo Offer because during the deal, we have some individual tasks and some teamwork, which is a great help during in my work, actually, because I do a lot of individual tasks, but then I have to work on the projects where my teamwork skills are really necessary. <laughs> awesome. So then uh, the individualism plus teamwork and then plus theory and workshops which we had in DIL. So I know how to handle theoretical stuff and then turn it into something real. And the, the main thing probably for myself is the multicultural experience is the best because I had to know a lot of countries, a lot of people from different countries. And now as I'm working at an international company, it really helps me a lot because I have to communicate with people from different parts of the world and it makes my communication so much more effective. Then I tried to list the things, uh, the subjects from DIL, which uh, were the most useful for me. So it was research. I think that it's important for a person to understand what kind of information you can find and which one is useful and which one is not and how to apply it in actual life. Also time management, I think that um, we had to meet the deadlines and then to work in the teams and in each country it was different. So now I, I know how to manage my time really well. Also I improved my English language, that's for sure. And I think that this was one of the main points why I got my job in the first place because I, I knew English. And uh, also I was writing my thesis about um, user center approach, how, how mem memory institutions can collaborate between each other to make digital memory institutions more attractive for users. So I tried to implement this at my work as well. I tried to see at my colleagues or clients as users of something I can give to them. And I also tried to get some feedback from them so that my work is really worth it. And if we scroll down, so I kind of had a dream, I think every student has a dream when he's studying and he wants to achieve something. And uh, my dream was to, to apply the knowledge I've gained during the semester in Parma and uh, when I was writing thesis, so it's about uh, user approach. But then instead, I'm working at the HR department as a knowledge management specialist. And actually it's not only knowledge management, but it's also internal communication. I deal with intranets, a lot of technical stuff as well. So I've learned HTML and stuff like that. And um, I think that uh, in my job now, uh, I mostly use information and knowledge management and human resources management, which we learned during the cold winter in Tallinn. And uh, actually, these are the things that I remember the most because it was so cold that we had to study, really. <laughs> so, uh, and it, all the things that uh, are like connected in here, I made a conclusion that if you soak up everything you can, you can inside and outside the classroom, because I think that DIL is also out, outside the classroom, then you then DIL is more than a digital librarian. So that's it. Thank you very much. And then the next one. Uh, is uh, Xenia again uh, together with Margaret and they will uh, speak about the case study of the institute where you, wor you work. Okay, we will display it. Margaret yeah. has it on the um, slash tag. And
Um, uh, we're Xenia and Megan. Um, I'm from deal 5, Megan is from deal 6. Okay, it's not on. It's on? Oh, this one, okay. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, we both work in Digital Humanities Center in um, Vienna. And we wanted to show how digital library program is Wow, okay. <laughs> we want to show. Uh, we wanted to show in our poster how digital library program and actually digital library as profession is uh, flexible because we both are working in one place, but none of our position is said digital librarian actually. <laughs> but we are um, using skills from our program and. Um, Yes, yeah, so we are, Megan is researcher and data curator, and my position is data analyst for semantic web technologies. Do you want to say about yours? Sure. sure. Okay, so, um, oh, okay. I hope you're not getting tired of me. But, um, yeah, so I'm uh, working at the ACBH, the Austrian Center for Digital Humanities, uh, primarily as a researcher. Um, applying digital uh, methodologies, research methodologies to um, humanities questions, namely um, Latin linguistics, history. Um, I'm compiling my own project on dedicatory letters by famous humanists during the 15th and 16th centuries. And I'm getting to use a lot of new tools that I had never been aware of um, before I came here, but I think that I was really prepared to to learn how to find tools that were applicable to my uh, research questions during my two years at Dill. Um, I would say especially through Anne Marie's course, through, uh, through uh, Rockman's course, um, I, I think that I was given a lot of skills. Um, I also do some metadata curation. Thank you, Niels, uh, for uh, the wonderful training that you gave, especially to me, because when I came to Dill, I was really not a technical person at all. I had no idea what a metadata schema was. But I'm really uh, very lucky to get to work with the curation module of um, Clara and Eric's uh, Virtual Language Observatory, which is kind of the largest um, linguistic resource uh, depository in Europe. And um, so I get to do a lot of metadata uh, crosswalks and stuff like that. So that's been just great fun. I've been able to utilize knowledge organization skills by uh, compiling um, uh, controlled vocabularies and open scopes and these were things that I learned also via source. Uh, the skills and competencies that I gained, or that I'm using and have gained. Text and linguistic analysis, part of speech tagging, limitization, morphology, natural language processing, just a teeny bit of programming. Um, yeah, is much better um, with this. And um, I do outreach and public speaking sometimes. Okay. So now it's about my position. Um, so my position is data analyst for semantic web technologies and data analyst is a position that nobody knows what data analyst does <laughs> because it's like it's very vague and it's like you do a lot of different things but the second part of my position explains it a little bit more so um, it's for semantic web technologies and um, I personally think of my position I divided for two parts first part it's web development so we are developing information systems for humanities scholars who come to us and say we have data like 50,000 uh, digitized uh, stratigraphical unit of archaeological excavations in Turkey collected uh, during last 60 years. We need to put this data online to make it searchable, visualize everything in Google Maps and stuff like this. And can you do that please for us? <laughs> so, and we do data modeling, we choose the database, uh, databases to store the data. Then they digitize it. We don't do digitization but we do uh, programming so information system um, where to put this data and they enter data like uh, records uh, or metadata and uh, I'm 
actually talking about digitizing early farming cultures project. It's a project also to digitize uh, a huge amount of archaeological data which was collected through last, I don't know, like 100 years in the uh, Austrian Institute of uh, Archaeology. So, and this is one part of my job. Another part of my job, I'm thinking of uh, working with semantic web technologies. Then you have your data, you can map it to ontology to make it more searchable, put it in some data, in RDF data dump, and to query it with yeah. Sparkle endpoint. We also work on user interfaces that um, our users archaeologists in that case could have a possibility to retrieve the data they entered and to make it searchable. Yes, so my competences that I need for my position is uh, programming skills and web technologies, uh, linked data skills, so you should know what is different formats, you can put data, you should know. Actually all linked data is working via uh, RESTful or not RESTful, <laughs> hopefully RESTful API, so you have to know basic, yeah, I mean you only can <laughs> retrieve data via API via programming way, so you have to know, but it's very easy to program this, <laughs> so <laughs> I mean it's a few lines of code. <laughs> and. Yes. So, and I also wanted to say that um, I uh, I really love the digital documents uh, course in uh, um, Norway, and it's actually influenced me a lot because till that moment I didn't know what I want to do, but then I heard about semantic web and RDF data model, and I was like, yes, this is what I want to do, and I was lucky enough to get the position to work with semantic resources. And yes, that's that's it. Yes, to pass them out because it's okay. only pictures. Okay. Uh, so my uh, short presentation is going to be in the format of uh, Pecha Kucha. So uh, I'm just going to show you some uh, some pictures and tell you about my current MA research. My presentation is called The Dill Professional as an Ethnographic Researcher Going Undercover in the Classroom to Collect Data on the Use of Digital Resources in Language Learning. Uh, when we ask ourselves in what way could digital librarians uh, play an active role in society, I believe that the road to that answer begins with the educated observation of the society we are immersed in and continues with the identification of unmet information needs in the everyday activities that the members of the society choose to pursue. Um, living in Estonia, I found myself in a... I found myself naturally as part of a demographic of foreigners who came either to work or study and who were interested in learning the local language. Now this is a very recent phenomenon. Um, Estonia until a short few years ago was not used to receiving this kind of influx of foreigners and uh, they were actually worrying about their own uh, language disappearing and what has happened now is that um, 
there are so many different institutions that are offering opportunities to learn it. Uh, currently, I have uh, identified, uh, I have categorized three different types of institutions. Uh, one part is uh, governmental institutions. Now, here there are several. There is uh, one that is uh, called uh, the Integration and Migration Foundation, and then there is also the Ministry for External Affairs, which is also offering free Estonian courses. Uh, then in most Estonian universities, including Tallinn University, the students have the possibility of taking Estonian classes. And then, right now, there are at least six private uh, language classes. And this is not counting on private tutoring, which is also very popular, especially for relocated uh, um, top managers and executives. So the amount of people who are engaging in studying Estonian is surprising for everybody. Uh, the government is investing a lot of money in developing digital resources uh, for this purpose. Uh, one of these projects uh, was a massive project that received a lot of funding uh, and it's called the Kelleklik, which uh, translates something like uh, language click. Uh, and it's a completely free language course. Of course, you have to log in, create a username, and they collect all kinds of uh, metrics about uh, the time that you spend online and at uh, what point do you quit and <laughs> who continues, etc. Uh, they are also collecting information, uh, demographic information of the people who sign up for their courses. They also collaborate with the private language schools. So there is already a lot of ongoing research on what is going on. Uh, and this is a phenomenon that keeps on growing. Uh, the growing rate of people coming, of foreigners coming to Estonia is from 30 to 50 percent. Uh, uh, each year for the past four years and it's expected to keep uh, growing at this rate. Um, what I found myself, the position that I found myself in is that I was one of these people. I could go into the classroom and I could be very quiet and I could take out a notebook and I could make notes of what recommendations for digital resources use was the professor giving. Uh, what were the sources of these digital resources? Uh, I would engage in conversation during the coffee breaks with my classmates uh, and I would ask them very casually uh, how they were studying at home and uh, which of the educational resources they were actually using and which other digital resources were they repurposing. Uh, so we have online radio, we have uh, news feeds in Facebook in Estonian language, uh, we have an enormous universe, we have social media use, it actually uh, has been a big part, the use of uh, social media, especially Facebook, for uh, learning Estonian. So. I, have, I am taking uh, a quite intense uh, and time-consuming approach to my thesis because this will imply that I will take three different Estonian language courses uh, from these three different categories of institutions. I have already completed one, which was with the Ministry of uh, External Affairs. And uh, from that course is the pictures that you're seeing now. It was quite a successful experience. Uh, I am currently about to finish my uh, Estonian course in Tallinn University, which has a completely different demographic group because it's a lot more homogenous. It's, uh, we are all college students, uh, mostly uh, MA students. Um, and then the last one, which I will do during the summer, will be in a private uh, language institution. And when I was uh, having a look at what was the research that was already available, I couldn't find that many examples of uh, ethnographic research within the uh, librarianship area. It's usually other approaches. And then for this specific topic, although there are other institutions like the university or like the government who are pouring a lot of resources uh, into it, none of them were in the position to get an insider's look from it. Uh, so... I should be finishing my data collection process in uh, hopefully in October of this year and then I will have a lot of data analysis.
to do from there. And I would like to tell you, oh, I am using a typology of uh, digital resources uh, developed in the University of Berkeley in California uh, by Professor Diane Hartley. Uh, but I will have to modify this typology to fit this uh, this uh, research. And uh, my research question is, how are digital resources being used by students and teachers of beginner level courses of Estonian language? Uh, what di and the sub-questions are, what digital resources are being provided by the teachers? What digital resources are being spontaneously used by the students? And how are the students engaging with these digital resources? And the outcome, what I hope, is to give feedback to all the institutions that are working on creating high quality um, resources for people to learn. Uh, and there was one surprise uh, a couple of weeks ago in my last class. Uh, I had a new kind of uh, institution come up, which is a startup that actually created an app uh, that you can download on your phone uh, where you can improve your vocabulary of Estonian. And uh, they're also interested in the feedback that I will get after I finish my data collection. So after I do uh, participant observation, I will also conduct one-on-one uh, -on -one interview uh, focus groups uh, and the interviews will be with the students and also with the teachers. Thank you. Professor Tamara and Professor Zanichelli, who I have to thank, to um, be the tutor of these students to support them in the study, uh, in their study processing, and I also supported the organi organization of this this meeting. So I'm really excited to be to be here and glad. So let's start. Uh, what is this? Uh, this is a. a a small but um, quite relevant, I think, survey that we sent to every uh, DIL um, uh, member of DIL community, so uh, every student that was part in past DIL editions, and it was to uh, ask them for about their current job position. Um, this in particular, how uh, asking them how much the deal experience uh, impact influenced their current job position, and hmm, these are the main topics: uh, how much deal master study experience impact on alumni careers. And the main uh, question that is uh, the center of this uh, um, survey is this, is the question we were asking uh, along, all along this uh, conference, which is what education for digital librarians in the Google era. So it's about uh, debating what are the new competence of digital librarians. And the main objectives in, uh, also in the long terms are to improve 
improve the DEAL program itself with new contents and methodologies uh, based not only uh, on what are your current job position but also what are the requirements of um, the job market, the job employers and also evaluate again the impact of DEAL Master in the career of new professional librarians. So the number of dealers who participated is not so wide. On uh, uh, it's uh, 25 dealers participated. You are more than 150. So, but it's uh, it's not very wide, but it's relevant. I think it's not so. It's not quantitative relevant, but uh, from these answers we can get we can catch some tendencies, some trends. I think. And they are from uh, 22 different countries. So the first uh, question was which, sec which sector you are you working currently? And um, the most uh, relevant uh, data is that it's not that the, the main part of this group is working in the university, but that the 28%, which is a uh, very relevant, I think, uh, of this group work in other sectors, uh, which can be, well, maybe in private, mainly in private sector. And we have a small part of them who is working in public sector, libraries, the traditional uh, places like libraries, archives and museums. And the 16% is working in business and industries, so again in the private sector. Uh, we ask them what is which is your job title first of all do you have a job title and then what is it and the main one is still uh, that of librarian which is still the traditional uh, title uh, and only one we had only one digital librarian and also um, the main, the other main title is that of manager. So we have a knowledge manager, content manager, project manager, also very much, and also researcher, assistant as mainly assistant li librarian. Sorry, and other other in these uh, uh, replies we get uh, titles like uh, technicians or um, again uh, well, maybe I have written somewhere I can cite you more precisely no I don't have sorry well this is quite interesting for these uh, technical uh, titles that is in the other part. Uh, the other question was, was your job, is your job title um, adequately cover all your responsibility? And the main response was yes, is it fits with all my responsibilities, but we also have a, a, a wide, a consistently wide part of them which thinks that no, it doesn't cover over all the responsibilities, so it is quite uh, limited. Mm. There is also a very uh, vague answer, which is yes, no, maybe, so there is not a very clear uh, opinion on this. And uh, another question, which is very, uh, we like it very much, which is I, I like to call myself digital librarian, and two of you replies this, and it's very, it's very good, we like it. Another question was uh, about the deal impact of, uh, of your current job position and it's do you feel that your deal education prepared you well for your current job position? Uh, we gave them a scale from 1 to 5 from not satisfactorily and very well and we are pleased to see that uh, constant part of them answered yes very well and and also they give a four which is not very well but um, it was a positive experience in terms of uh, job positions. 
What were the best three things? We asked for three things about your deal education. This is not a quantitative analysis. This is just to give you uh, some uh, features uh, that are part of deal and that are very um, very characteristic of it. So the main um, the main feature that everybody agree on is the multicultural side of deal, which I think is the, the most important that we have to keep it. The international environment. And the other one which were really appreciated was the fact that they worked with passionate professor professors and high-level professionals and but also to um, the fact that deal gave them a, a wide and deep overview an updated overview on digital librarianship in the world so in an international level and also other feature that are really really positive which is the team working and peer review uh, the fact that deal uh, community uh, um, keeps um, it's uh, alive keep um, keep alive uh, all along in a long life uh, time so the lifelong community the connection the networks that he create and uh, and other aspect like scholarship the internship also and the fact that it um, it deals with digital with information te technology contents we also asked uh, what were what are the three things that you would like to change about deal and the main aspect uh, is that the most the most part of it of them agree that deal needs to um, to make them work and employ in a, in a practical uh, way what they are studied the theory that they studied so um, and more and also more technical uh, ab to develop more technical abilities like that of programming languages software management and building practically more ontologies and running effectively digital libraries I'm going quick. Um, what were the most helpful modules and training? And the main part of them agree that in the internship is the, uh, the most useful experience because we can read this uh, based on what they said that they need to employ in a practical environment what they learned in theory. That is the main, uh, the main point, I think. What were the least helpful modules? And uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, they, they um, actually they give different, very different answers. But we see that the um, the most um, wide part of them uh, gives other response. We give the possibility to say other, and the majority of them said they all added some knowledge. So it's a positive answer. And it's finished, yes. So this was just um, a, a lecture of what the feedback that we have. Again, it is not so wide, but we can see some, some relevant data, I think. And I think that also Elena Corradini is a more uh, apt person that can give a deeper analysis of this. So I give the platform, the floor to, to her. Thank you. <laughs> Deal survey, which um, was um, uh, sent uh, uh, using the deal student, uh, asking to the employers to fill uh, the questionnaire, but also um, was given in particular was sent to employers. Uh, employers uh, um, which have had the collaboration for the internship. The internship, as uh, you have seen, has been one of the most um, useful part of the program, but uh, was useful not only for students, I honestly can say it was very important for professors too, 
because uh, um, the labor market is leading the digital library transformation uh, and so was continuously a stimulus to also update the program and then uh, um, I don't know how to go on. Um, and so um, we asked the, the employers, uh, the reply are all uh, the 10 institutions where we have the mentor and uh, in total uh, uh, 23, if I remember well, uh, employers uh, or deal student. And so um, uh, we selected only this uh, sample who know very well uh, deal program through the um, alumni they have uh, or uh, collaborated or uh, recruited. And so um, this is uh, the um, pillar, uh, Ragnar uh, spoke of four pillar uh, to be simple, we <laughs> aggregate in free. But uh, I think that the characteristic uh, of DIL, uh, uh, beyond the multicultural and international uh, environment, which is, uh, I think, uh, the, the unique in, uh, in the present offering of uh, master. But uh, we focus on a combination of uh, technology and uh, um, uh, LIS. Edu uh, content uh, with uh, a strong focus on uh, user studies and uh, research methods and uh, uh, really um, is only to simplify uh, to divide the, the, this, uh, the content in group because the, we try to have as much as possible the integration between uh, technology and user studies between uh, user studies and uh, LIS and technology. There are many overlap um, and uh, it was interesting for me to note that when I asked you to form two groups, one for technology and one for curation, you decided, uh, and you are completely right, to, to do only one group <laughs> with the two things together. Because really, uh, it's an interdisciplinary course is interdisciplinary because the, uh, there is a confluence between the different background. And so, um, what uh, um, I, uh, the employers want? Uh, um, I um, don't want to say that they um, were appreciating the course, um, because th this is uh, what they really do. <laughs> <laughs> I want to stress what they asked more, no? what they think should be improved. And so um, they asked, for example, to, um, to have more uh, engagement on the community and so to, to teach more about how to create community, which is not uh, banal. Uh, from the point of view of um, technology, this corresponds in part to what the student alumni have asked and uh, um, they asked more about data and text mining and also more about usability and user experience studies. And then uh, for um, knowledge organization, um, the request uh, was uh, more about the semantic and the information theory and uh, um, also um, cultural aspect. Cultural aspect. Okay. Uh, then uh, um, from the employers uh, uh, we understood that uh, as very important uh, not only the competencies but the skills. Also in the panel today um, it, this uh, came um, uh, evident. And so uh, some particular attitude uh, and capabilities um, such as for example multicultural understanding, uh, presentation skills uh, or uh, learning, learning to learn, time planning, user focus and team working that we have illustrated. 
but uh, um, more skill are requested and uh, um, first of all uh, interdisciplinarity which means uh, uh, probably flexibility as uh, it is being uh, called today and uh, also creativity and managing changing, change, this was repeated by the expert today and uh, also um, risk taking, not to have, um, and so this uh, should be other uh, skills um, to be um, applied or um, implemented in deal. Then uh, uh, there are some recommendations, uh, uh, both from uh, deal alumni and employers, I put together because they are repeating um, the same. Um, switching to data curation, uh, not uh, only um, as we have done uh, together to, until now about convergence, but uh, uh, include data curation uh, for GLAM, but not only. Uh, um, to focus more on uh, semantic web and big data and uh, uh, understanding and applying design thinking and knowing uh, how to get input from the user. And the last, uh, cooperation, better cooperation with all the stakeholders. And so, um, this was just uh, the main result of the survey. Uh, we have collected a lot of data and we um, will try to elaborate more and, um, and do a paper, I think, that uh, involving um, uh, the student and uh, also the professor, because there is a lot of uh, data uh, which can be used uh, for DIL, first of all, but probably also for other program uh, and so other professor, educators interested in uh, digital library education. Um, thank you. Uh, DIL candidature is open until June. And so, if somebody is interested, uh, is the right time? Yeah, and uh, Francesco can say something. Let me start. That I'm very pleased uh, with what I have seen today. Uh, I was involved uh, only since a few years in deal, and today gave me the exact idea of what is uh, deal, and uh, particularly the brilliant results of many of the what were students in deal, and now they are professionals, and other that I think that we're not able to be to be here, but uh, I think that we had the, uh, really the evidence of what uh, was achieved in this uh, ten, 10 year um, master, and now it's time for another edition, the 10th edition, and uh, we hope to recruit other uh, enthusiastic and uh, interested uh, prospective students. Uh, although uh, I'm not really happy, uh, happy about this, but now the, the master is uh, uh, organized jointly by only by Italian University and University of Parma, and we really, really ma uh, miss Ragnar and all the, <laughs> the Norwegian guys, but uh, uh, we, we, we are open for uh, anything. So. <laughs> And uh, so there will be, um, so Time University will be the uh, administrative uh, um, seat and uh, so you can see here in this slide, uh, not for you to, to reapply for another deal tour, but uh, as uh, a testimonials and, and uh, to, 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 to let other uh, potential candidates uh, with uh, your experience, with your, uh, your, your, your witnessing the, 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 the results and uh, I also really appreciated the, the um, frankly speaking, what, what have been put on the table for us to improve uh, our program. So I also really enjoyed the, the need for, um, for additional technology and uh, for uh, some more uh, 
<coughs> in effort in, the, in this particular direction. And uh, so um, I hope that you will do your best to promote uh, uh, this 10th uh, uh, edition of the Deal Master. And uh, you can also uh, forward the uh, uh, interested people to, to us and uh, to Siri Virkus, uh, who is currently the, the deal coordinator. So the, the application uh, for um, European uh, uh, students are open till uh, the 1st of June, and while for uh, extra European uh, uh, people, uh, I don't remember exact, the exact date, but it's on the website. So thank you for in advance for what you will do in uh, promoting uh, and uh, and uh, helping have other people like you, which I was very impressed by today and and, uh, and earlier. Okay. Uh, there is the need to maintain this community, more family than community, <laughs> and um, I. I hope uh, to find a way of uh, starting to engage in this community <laughs> in uh, more and more in a deal. And so uh, whatever idea you have or suggestion is welcome. Uh, there are many possibilities I think um, we can have to continue virtually. Also if today it was a gift to have uh, so, so many of you here, you have uh, worked a lot to come uh, long, uh, long distance um, and uh, before we go can we have a photo all together <laughs> yeah do we agree do you agree we do a group uh, all professor yeah yeah but we can okay if you prefer, if you prefer, we start with all together and then, <laughs> because uh, really this division, as you see, is very narrow. Uh, we have to learn a lot from you, because uh, you are uh, really realizing the digital life. That's something that's yeah. because uh, I was uh, in the Italian scholar, and I was uh, Sì, sì, è o così, comunque si si esprime.